We brought her here a couple of years ago, and my mercy, we're bringing loans. With an incandescent smile, tireless energy, and a bow tie that would make Winston Churchill nod in sartorial approval, Bob Keeve is on the job. Hi, George. Hey, Bob. Along with being the most dapper 90-year young businessman in the Silicon Valley, Keeve is also one of the most honored. Most recently, Keeve was selected as San Jose Silicon Valley's Chamber of Commerce's very first distinguished business leader. Busy. So we got the dashing to man with a bow tie has been the president of the Empire Broadcast Corporation since 1967. And at an age when most guys have hung up their spurs, Keeve runs two independent San Jose radio stations, All News KLIV AM and Country Music's KRTY FM. 95.3 KRTY, San Jose's hot country. It's a little big town there. It's called Pontoon. Radio has continued to engage the American public. Uh, 90, 98 percent, something like that, of Americans listen to the radio at least once a day. It's incredible. It has not changed. Bob Keeve has always been on the run. He was born in New Jersey in 1922. A track star in high school at the Berkshire School in Massachusetts, he won the 100 and 220 yard dashes along with the broad jump in just one meet. He was also editor of the school newspaper, The Green and Gray, as a member of the class of 1939. Keefe fell in love with radio as a freshman at Harvard, and it would have a profound effect on his path in life. I spent so much time at it and s devoted so much of my energy to it uh, and my enthusiasm that by the end of the freshman year, I was practically running that station. With World War II raging throughout Europe and the Pacific, Keefe graduated from Harvard in 1943. He worked as an information officer for the U.S. government, first in England, and then in the American embassy in Spain. It was a battle for the hearts and minds of the people facing down Adolf Hitler. We had some propaganda objectives, but there was one that was supreme, and that objective was to see to it that, that the people in Spain, but specifically the people running Spain, which meant Franco on down, uh, understood one very important fact, namely that we were going to win the war. Not all the fighting was on the battlefield, but also waged on radio and in newspapers. We wanted very much to make sure that Franco did not allow Adolf Hitler to run his forces over the Pyrenees, down through Spain, to take over Gibraltar, and thus to cut off the lifeline that we had on the Mediterranean. So that was enormously important. Following the Allies' victory, Keeve eventually returned to radio working in New York. However, in 1952, when Dwight Eisenhower was elected president, Keeve's former boss in Spain, Emmett Hughes, was hired as a speechwriter, and he brought Bob along with him to work in the White House. Uh, I always say I'm a, I was a writer for Eisenhower. I got involved in speeches, but I got involved in every much, much more trivial things than that. And sometimes that, in, that involved some tricky... Uh, uh, political issues, uh, where they would send me a draft of what they wanted to say, and I would look at it and know darn well that that was not going to fly, and I'd have to confer with the State Department and re rewrite it. Keeve was thunderstruck by Eisenhower's intellect, his integrity, and his precision with language. I can't express the, the, the true excitement that I have about that man. Um, he was so totally misunderstood during his presidency by the press. This man was, was, was so extraordinary. Uh, he was so fast to pick up on things that, that were new to him. Just a brilliant guy. On the walls of Bob's office are copies of his speeches that Eisenhower had edited. I said, you must be particularly proud, this is talking to the community, that your community was named after the great emancipator so long before his fame, and I'm sure that all of you, etc., etc. not with him. He saw a way of cutting it down. And he said, you must be particularly proud that your community was named after the great emancipator in anticipation rather than in memory of his fame. And he just he went right to the heart of it. Keeve returned to radio after serving in the White House and eventually ended up running a radio station in Rochester, New York. In 1967, he moved west and purchased K 
KLIV. That was wonderful because I think for a large part of my life I had wanted to live in California and did not think it would be possible. And here was a, an opportunity not only to do that, but to own a radio station. Uh, it was great. There have been a number of highlights in his 45 years at the helm, but one of the most memorable occurred in 1989, immediately following the Loma Prieta earthquake. I was in the radio station in KLIV, and that was probably the, the, the proudest moment for us as a radio station. It, we, we were lucky in that three or four of uh, our reporters were actually in the building at the time, and we started finding out what was happening. We took telephone calls from people all over the uh, Santa Clara County and were able to report through their voices what was happening in different parts of the county. And I think that the result of all this was that we um, had a calming effect here in the county because things were not here as they were up in San Francisco. Are you behaving? No. Good. Along with running his radio stations, Keeve has been an avid supporter of San Jose, a former president of the Rotary Club, director of the San Jose Symphony Foundation, and countless other organizations, Keeve believes in community service. I think when I look back at my life, I'm pleased with the diversity that I've been able to participate in, um, the, 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 the great experience in Spain, uh, the wonderful experience at the White House, uh, the real fun of running that radio station in Rochester, New York, uh, and the fun not only of running the radio stations here, but also uh, participating in a way that was impossible for me in the past in community activities. So, are you behaving? No. I didn't think so. <laughs> and along the way, he's managed to keep Maverick neckwear in fashion and the independent spirit of the bow tie flourishing. 